in this video we are going to be talking about the probably the most bitchiest most complaining thing i've ever seen in magic the gathering people complain more of this about mill more than land destruction stacks this is the most complained about thing i personally have seen when it comes to magic the gathering and that's a power level of a deck you have probably heard at some stage of your magic the gathering life people going i've got a level six deck i've got a level eight deck and then they play it and they're like no that's a level four or level ten and it's all over the place and people are like i don't like your deck because it did something i don't like so i'm going to give it an additional like a level or two so in this video i am going to be going over the power levels explaining them in as much detail as i possibly can to help people understand the power level more so then when they go to it they can just go i think it's an eight and then you can just go here i know a great amazing and handsome youtuber that talks about magic the gathering watch this video and then like it and subscribe to him do it so in this video again i'll be going over all the power levels and hopefully helping you understand it more but before i go any further a word from the sponsor the sponsor of this video is me i have started an etsy page where i'm going to try and be selling clothes that i've designed thought would be funny thought would be cool thought would be amazing on people's bodies so i literally spent maybe a month or two looking at different resources and stuff to come up with the nicest clothes i could possibly find with the coolest designs that i have done myself with stuff like play mats hoodies t-shirts i'm going to try and do phone cases they're harder than i thought but i do think that it is a really good thing to actually put into so if you would like to help me out or help the channel out please go onto my etsy it will be linked down below and you'll be able to find very nice clothing and also be supporting the channel so links down below and also if there's any other designs i will be putting on any of my social media so please follow me there as well so to help people out the information of levels is in a little image right here but i'm going to be going through it in a little bit more detail and hopefully explain and helping you understand it better but if you just want to see the image it will be linked down below so when it comes to power levels it's in four different sections tiers power levels turn counts and general description tiers is kind of how your deck was built so it starts off at the very bottom with unfocused which means you just pretty much didn't really care and put a bunch of cards together then there is competitive where you actually concentrated on the cards in the deck and figured out the exact power of every single one and how they work together to make it the most optimized deck you could possibly make now when it comes to unfocused they are very fast to make you literally just get any card that pretty much has a color pip that is in your commander and you slap it in even if it does damage to yourself but then when it comes to the top tier that is competitive you are literally looking at cards going this helps 13 of my cards and this helps 10 of my cards and together they make this deck run really really fast i apologize if you hear the people low on the moan outside there's nothing i can do about it but now we're on to the power level standing off at number one and going all the way up to 10. This is where most people talk about. This is where the people will go, your deck is a level eight, a level six, a level two, because it's more easy than saying your deck is unfocused or focused or optimized or literally like competitive. It's an easiest way to just go, this is roughly where it is and it's very easy and fast to say. Next we have turn counts. This is pretty much how many turns it should take for your deck to win now this varies because it depends on what you draw but this is the rough estimate so pretty much every 10 games how many turns does it take you to win is where roughly it will be it starts off with pretty much you don't win you have 15 plus turns and your deck doesn't win at all but then there's zero turns as in there's a lot of cards you can play before the game so they count that in as well so you can win the game pretty much before the game even starts best way to put that is the exodia version of magic the gathering in these tiers each one comes with two descriptions each with 10 in total starting off with one and going to 10 pretty much talking a brief description of what your deck should do to be at that level so now we start off with the actual thing itself starting off at the bottom at the bottom there is unfocused which is a level one or level two deck these have 
no plan to win you're literally just throwing cards in that you're able to play that are either unbanned or a color that is the color of your commander the general description of these are a random pile of cards the deck confirms the color identity and the card limit rules that's it lots of random mana intensive cards no effect redundancy no concern of a working mana curve an overabundancy of etbt and bad utility lands little to no actual ramp except for the first seven turns to be land pass wins are included as a result from long grindy combat so in other words you literally just are in a rush you see a commander you're like ah this command is absolutely amazing i'm just going to literally grab every single card like one could be put a one one counter on it but then the other one can be creatures you control get minus three minus three and then they could just be random cards just thrown in as long as it is legal to play and in the colors of your commander you literally don't care what you do and it's actually a surprise when you draw a card the next is what's a wine con if decks have a strategy, they'll probably be dependent on their commander being in play at all times to simply function. Any win not achieved by grinding combat will likely be thought as convoluted, fragile combat. While land bases may be more conserved except for a gold of ETBT lands and trap choices like Temple of the False God. Pretty much this is a boosted up version where you somewhat looked at the cards and put them in as well pretty much lands that you just go they're in the colors they're slightly better i took out the normal tap land and put in like a temple of the false god as i said and you put stuff like a scry land in over a normal just double tap land now we're going on to focused decks these are level three and four power these usually take 15 plus turns to win so they're very very slow but they work with the commander and you probably have some form of a game plan but the general description of these cards are normal pre-con decks have two or three basic strategies which may or may not actively work with one another mana bases are usually laughably bad lots of tap lands inefficient mana rocks many cards are inefficient and basically filler board state matters in the name of the game and thus board wipes are usually not welcome battle cruisers is very common pretty much these are the old pre-cons you could buy that you put in even worse mana than you bought from the deck itself these are the cards somewhat work together but they're very very slow and you're probably playing with a lot of commons and uncommons where you're trying to plan hopefully in the future to put the rare variant of them in to make the deck a little bit faster the second one is strong pre-cons more tightly designed decks with mana bases are awfully still ugly to look at if more than mono colored the decks may or may not have a specific win con in mind but they do it usually is a three plus card combo expect some draw or tutors but largely over cost for what they do more decks are generally low budget so these are pretty much like the newer pre-cons that the lands are still a bit meh but better than the older versions of them these are a little bit faster because you're putting in a little bit of extra draw or two just to get the cards you want you want the win condition to be three or more cards but they're usually like maybe five to ten mana or more these are just slightly better pre-cons that you can buy next we're going on to tuned these are level five and six these are somewhere between 14 and 10 turns to win and the description of both of these sections are ungraded pre-cons decks probably have a base strategy in mind most are somewhat generalists often employing a wide arrange good stuff cards like draw spells board wipes etc to supplement their primary goal mana bases and card choice are better but often still insignificant due to budget or prioritizing personal favorites over strategy choices pretty much the best way to put this is a deck that most people build the first time they build a deck where they're putting in they're not building their favorite or strongest deck because they have like maybe one maybe shock land or something like that like all their good and best cards are in one deck but they want to build a second deck but they don't have the cards for it so it's kind of like your mid-range cards that you have put into a deck that work well together that you have made yourself with a good few board wipes but not your best ones a good few spells like 
very good draw cards or kill spells but again not your best kind of like if you have a rare version of a card you're putting in the uncommon because the rare is in your favorite deck and then there's deck with a plan decks have a defined strategy in mind or multiple that synergizes well to enable a solid game plan spell choices are more focused but with mixed levels of efficiency lands entering untapped are prioritized Battle cruiser decks are uncommon. Most decks contain at least one win, hard win con, usually a combo. Decks often have a mod modest budget. These are probably decks that I say are like 50 quid up, unless you are building something like elves that could be broken for super cheap. These are where you put kind of like your mid-level cards, but still have some form of win con in there. That's one or two cards that you're able to tutor and get out easier than you would with in one of your other decks. This is where you put kind of like, not all your, like it's not all basic lands and all tap lands. This is where you may put one or two or three kind of better lands. Like if you're having a Voltron deck, maybe you're putting in like a Rogue's Passage or something, or lands that you're able to power up your creatures and stuff. Better Scry lands, better like Shock lands, if you have one or two spare. It is kind of like your, they're not your favorite decks, they're not your weakest decks, they're kind of like your mid-range, I built this but don't have the money to make it perfect or very strong. And then we have optimized. These are level seven or eight decks and probably the most complained about in my opinion. You went on turn nine to turn five, these are a lot faster. But the two general descriptions of these are playing with power. Decks are largely refined down to just the best cards of their strategy. Perfect slash nearly perfect land base, multiple cheap tutors, highly efficient ramp, draw, etc. Most decks become less generalist as they focus are heavily on the primary strategy, except to see lots of powerful staples. High budget decks are fairly uncommon. These are probably your 100, 200, 3, 4, 500 quid decks that you're hard focusing on what your commander does or what you want the deck to do, putting in maybe not the best, but the best versions you can get your hands on of these cards. Like they might be, you might be putting in your brand new of the game, your soul ring instead of your Sisse's ring, or maybe it might be that one deck you maybe put your mana crypt in that you really hard focus on this deck, because again, it might be something to do with artifacts. This is where you put your like, best more expensive tutors in or you're putting more money into the deck to get the better version of the tutors you already have same with draw the best versions of the creatures you're hard focusing and the deck does pretty much one thing very very well so like for example if you're playing a locust god deck you're putting in your best wheels or whirlpools and draw spells that you have out of the, among the cards you have then we have living on the edge decks have a specific constant game plan often follow to find the line of play. Every card enables support or protection for the deck's primary strategy, lots of low cost ramp, a tight mana curve casting multiple spells, a turn can be expected as early as turn one. Many decks, but not all, are high budget or budgetless. This is pretty much your average player's best deck. This is where they're putting in the hard money, putting in if they open any really rare cards, putting it in these type of decks. This is pretty much like your best deck that most people will have that only play casually. This is like their number one, their favorite deck. They're putting on all their money. They're putting in their best lands they possibly own. If they had like a five mana tutor, but they ended up opening a three or two mana tutor, this is going straight in. There's no question about it. If ands or buts, this is their favorite deck. This is the deck that when they put down, you're more likely to huff or puff or complain about. That's if you're that type of player. And then finally, we have this section that most people, maybe not all, at least no one person say they have a deck that is this powerful, but then when they actually play it, there's always something that goes wrong with it. And this is the competitive decks. These are like a nine, possibly a 10. These win turn four to zero, which again is very weird. I wonder if there is a way to win at level zero. Let me know in the comments down below. But these are the, you're not doing anything if you're playing a new deck or a pre-con, you're literally watching them play the game. By the time you're actually able to say online and able to cast cards, they already have a board that is absolutely huge or you're on barely any life that you don't really have time to do anything. These are pretty much like pro decks or decks that are considered very, very powerful. These are very optimized. 
with all the best cards and I mean all the cards in the deck are the best they could possibly be which are usually the most expensive ones. But the two general descriptions of these are Tier 2 CEDH decks. Decks have no fat. Every card matters, every play is impactful. Decks have several specific lines to play. They expect to make multiple plays on a turn from turn 1, if not sooner. You may have already interacted with just quickly board states and less important than the lower level budget decks in common, but some decks aren't very expensive. Pretty much this is fully optimised with pretty much maybe because of the deck you're playing or the commander it's not as fast as you want it to be you're not playing it that you're picking the commander and also having the best cards you're pretty much playing a commander that you want and putting it to the best of its abilities then there is tier 1 cdh decks the most powerful decks in the format every card is hyper efficient and constancy is almost on a card to card basis. Power plays and instant speed interactions are thrown around like water balloons. While inexpensive decks can be here, budgetless versions of them are almost always going to resign supreme due to efficiency. Pretty much these are if they ever did a here is a pro version that all four players are pros, this is what it's going to look like. This is one of those that these are the fastest games. They're literally just going cool. Turn one, I'm going to play like three to five cards and then on your turn i'm going to counter pretty much everything you do or because i've done everything right you're not going to be able to do anything this is what will probably be the most annoying to casual players if they're like i bought a pre-con i've slightly upgraded it or i bought a pre-con or i have a deck that i like that is not i just want to play it for fun and then that one person comes in and goes cool uh, i play all the landlines draw like a bunch of cards because i've played a bunch of cards and then i have like 20 creatures on the field and uh no one can play creatures or cast spells or even look at me without dying now and then the next person goes i draw for my first turn these are like, I might be like over exaggerating how powerful they are, but this is one of those things that it feels like that. This is one of those things that you're like, I want to have a casual fun game and someone's like, I've gone through half of my deck already and we are just starting. It is the optimized, perfect, perfect deck based on that commander. So if this has ever happened to you or any of these things, hopefully this video has helped you decide or help you understand more how power levels work. If you have any stories of people coming in being like, I have this deck and it ends up being completely different, let me know in the comments down below. If you have any decks that are CEDH or Moxfield or anything like that, I would love to see in the comments down below. I love what, looking at other people's decks. If you have a Moxfield, again, link it down below. I will follow anyone that has a Moxfield. It helps me learn more and then I get to see other people's amazing decks. While you're down there, remember to like and subscribe and follow and share it to your friends and all of that. But if you ever built a deck like this and ever wondered, I do have a video where I talk about the 10 top Wilbur Commanders, which is right here if you want to watch that. I also have a playlist where I talk about Magic the Gathering stuff here and a subscribe button here. And I'm so close to 900 from as recording of this. I need like 15 people and I will really appreciate getting me to my first K. But as always, I will see you all in the next video.